Looking forward to seeing what happens in the quarterfinals across UEFA competitions. We turn our attention to the Europa League now. Manchester United, Sevilla, Juventus, Sporting, Lisbon, Feyenoord, Roma, by Leverkusen against Union Saint, someone. And then, of course, Michael, <laughs> it's your turn to go first. Manchester United, Sevilla, Rashford injury. Must be a concern mm. for you, right? Yes, very, very, very much concerned. There's been question marks of, is an R United Rashford dependent? Yes, the answer is yes. They do have Casemiro back in the fold. That's proven to be very important. But where are the goals going to come from? If anyone in the group chat says, Veghorst, I'm coming to your house, and you and I are going to have a very difficult conversation. Not seeing it with that guy. But the fact that Anthony Martial did get a goal at the weekend is going to be massive for his confidence and massive for potential production. But the big question mark is how long Marcus Rashford is out because that will have an implication on the rest of their season. You think they get the job done, though, Mike? I mean, you don't sound too confident here. This is a Sevilla that pretty much have their name already stitched on this trophy. I mean, they should have renamed this a few years back, but this is not the same Sevilla side, I would imagine. I, I, I do think they, they get the job done. Watching Sevilla versus Celta Vigo, Sevilla are a team that find ways to throw games away this season. They're, there's not as much of that savviness. They're an emotional side. El Nesri, he has been the player in form for them, not so much in the Europa League. And Eric Lamella, he's really come to life in the second half of the season since the World Cup. Those two players will make it difficult for United. I think it's going to be more difficult being the home team in this tie for United than being the away team. I think make it competitive, grinding out a result away to Sevilla is going to be important. But then managing the game in that second leg is going to be how they win this tie. One thing I'd just uh, dive in and say, credit to Man United and to an extent credit to Tottenham uh, for kind of ending this top four race or near enough ending it. So one of the, the real advantages is, you know, as Mike rightly noted there, the, the problem they've got is it's going to be really hard to score against Sevilla. But at least Ten Hag can go at both these games pretty much full strength. Nottingham Forest away in between them. The city ground is a very hard place to go. But Forest have, have dropped off a little bit. So I would think Ten Hag will look at these three games and think I can I can hold some players back in the Premier League. Even if we do drop points, we've got enough wiggle room there. Um, that to me means you kind of have to make United quite strong favourites uh, for this tie. Because Sevilla are rubbish as well. I mean, when you say that the race for the top four is over, does that mean that you're convinced that right. you know, Emery's Aston Villa are I've breaking got a, into let, it? Let's be crystal clear on this. <laughs> that is, if anyone that follows XG even takes a cursory glance at Aston Villa's oh. XG, it's going to end in tears sooner or later. That's all I'll say. JJ, can I turn my attention to Juventus against Sporting Lisbon with you, Juve, losing at Lazio um, this past match day? Um, this is a tough one to call, actually. Sporting Lisbon, obviously, we don't expect too much from them, but Juventus still have a vulnerability about them. What are you expecting from this tie? Yeah, they do have a vulnerability, vulnerability about them, and they still, you know, are fighting to get themselves back into the, uh, you know, the real, uh, you know, Euro European qualifications uh, places in Serie A. For the remainder of the season, obviously, we know that they had, you know, that 15 point uh, deduction. Uh, and, you know, for me, you know, normally I would have favored Juventus, but Juve, they've been such a difficult watch throughout the majority of the season. Even when they had that uptick in form recently that's pushed them back into contention in the league, it's still not been entirely convincing. And Sporting, Sporting had their moments where they looked very good in the Champions League. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, dumping out Arsenal is nothing to be sniffed at, you know, at this stage as well. So for me, I think that this, you know, potentially has the makings of being, you know, one bridge too far for, for Juventus. Obviously, they've got that base level of ability and quality where they're able to blow away teams like Nantes despite a fantastic atmosphere for that second leg. But, you know, coming up against Sporting, that's an entirely different beast. And I feel like Sporting could be really tricky customers for Juve. I think it'll be close over the two legs, but it really wouldn't surprise me if Sporting avoided defeat away from home and then managed to get the job done once they take it back to Portugal. Can I throw in my favourites yeah. to win the Europa League? Uh, I think Bayer Leverkusen, who have won mm. somewhere in the region of seven or eight games straight and are really starting to look like a force under Xabi Alonso. This is, this is the team to watch out. I think their path to the final is a little bit easier than United's, whether it's Juventus or Sporting that get through. Um, and Ian, I know you'll agree with me on this. I think they might have the best player in the competition in one 
Florian Witz, who I have been going on about for years. Um, and great to see him. Was it two assists at the weekend as they kind of took apart Eintracht Frankfurt, a good Eintracht Frankfurt team? Um, the only thing you would say with Leverkusen is they're playing so well and they're winning so many games that suddenly the idea that they can just focus on the Europa League, it's a little bit out there. You know, they've got, they could achieve something in the Bundesliga as well, but a fantastic team. They play really proactive front footed football. They play the football you would expect a Xabi Alonso team to play. Um, Union San Gilois, I'm, I'm not taking them lightly for an instant. I just think Paya Leverkusen are really, really special. And they're the one I'd yep. keep an eye on if I'm unfamiliar with the Europa League teams. Louis if I could just up. jump in and uh, piggyback on James's question to add to Ian as well. I've noticed that Amin Adli has come back into contention as well. Very talented uh, young player. Fantastic, uh, you know, ability. And it seems to have woken up Moussa Diaby as well. Uh, you know, do you think that sort of this kind of goal glut that they showed certainly when they knocked Monaco out is something that they could continue for a couple of you know rounds further because that seems like a very very potent mix when you have Diaby, Adley and Vitz you know all firing at the same time. By the way they've still got a lot of injuries Leverkusen that they're dealing with right now and the fact that they're not at full strength is a bit of a concern but the fact that they're in form right now as James pointed out here's a couple of stats here to back you up James. Leverkusen won seven in a row now across all competitions. They're unbeaten in nine games across all comps and in the Bundesliga in particular they're unbeaten in six won the last five consecutive and scored 15 goals in the last four games in the Bundesliga. I mean they're scoring goals now and I think Xavi Alonso it took him a minute here just to get hit right for the way he won to do it also took a minute to get Florian Wirtz back healthy also took a minute to get Adley back playing to get players confident again and he's not got a full strength squad so that tells me there's more to come from this Leverkusen side and Adley by the way at the weekend JJ the way he took that first goal was phenomenal such composure never thought he was as quick as he was he showed it at the weekend how quick he was and um, emphatic composed finish as well to follow suit I'm just impressed with what Xabi Alonso is doing with his squad immensely. I mean, I'm really, really impressed. And I think that they've got a real opportunity to do damage in the Bundesliga now and potentially get themselves into a top four finish. Um, but I wouldn't put it past them from being a team to be worried about in this competition. If they can get past this Union saint Giroud squad, who obviously have had success against Union Berlin, and they scored a I think they scored three goals in Berlin in yeah. that first leg. So they are a danger and they're a team you can't take lightly because Union Berlin are not an easy team to beat either. But Leverkusen are definitely my favourites. Let's finish with Roma uh, real quickly before we get out of here. Um, there's a great story coming up before we discuss this game. Michael, come to you on this one here. Mourinho's devastating quote about Cassano. Um <laughs> This week, producer Des loves this one. Cassano played for Roma, Inter, and Real. In Madrid, he is remembered for his jacket. With Roma, he won a Supercopa without playing. And for Inter, he didn't even win the Lombardi Cup. You know what? I won with Inter, Real Madrid, and Roma. He will have a problem with me, and I won't with him. I'm not going to lie. I love the comments, even though I'm a huge Cassano fan. Mm. Um this was an interesting quote and comment and timing for this, especially ahead of a big game against Feyenoord right now, who are a very dangerous side. Uh, one thing that I hope we've all learned is don't mess with Jose Mourinho, especially in the press and through the press. This guy is undefeated. I mean, he has my most iconic quote. If I speak, I am in trouble. Don't mess with this guy. But on the field, I think this tie is very intriguing. Feyenoord is having an amazing season in the the Air Divisi, top of the league. I think they're 10 points ahead of Ajax. No one saw that eight, coming. Eight points. Eight points, excuse me. My math is off today. But they're top of the league in the Netherlands. They're getting goals from everywhere. Up top, the guy that I love that's been their talisman in this competition, Santiago Jimenez. This guy played in Liga MX, and we've seen countless Liga MX players and players from the Mexican national team Go over to the Netherlands. Eric Gutierrez at PSV having success. Now Jimenez having success with Feyenoord. In midfield, they're getting goals. It's not just getting goals from up top, but also in midfield with their Turkish attacking midfielder, Kirkju. Last season in the Conference League, he was one of their standout players that helped get them to the final against Jose Mourinho's AS Roma side. So a little bit of storyline there. For Roma, it's between two players. It's Pellegrini getting the assists, getting goals in this competition, not as much in Serie A, but has come to life. And Paulo Dybala, this guy was brought in to deliver performances. He has been their offensive juggernaut, especially in the last couple of games. Roma as well, 
climbing the Syria table in third place in Syria. See, I'm going to have to be really biased on this one. Feyenoord are a massive threat with the Dutch uh, coefficient where it is, like to, to French football. So I'm really, I've got my fingers crossed that Feyenoord get dumped out and that Nice do the business and go all the way and win the Europa Conference League. But in all seriousness, mm. that deep run that Feyenoord had uh, a year ago or so, that was absolutely crucial in boosting up uh, the Dutch coefficient, uh, you know, for for UEFA. So. You can't write them out at this level. They are, you know, establishing themselves very, very well as a team to be reckoned with once again on the continental stage. I mean, I do still fancy Roma slightly because, you know, you have that wealth of experience that Mourinho brings. And obviously, you know, he's got in his sights the, the potential to win the Europa League now, having won the Europa Conference League. And who knows, maybe he'll fancy himself for another shot at the Champions League at some point in the future. Maybe not. But you know, for me, I think that Roma do probably still have the edge, but you cannot write off this final side. Just uh, two things I wanted to end on. First of all, um, I want, I believe Des has got this lined up. So for those people watching on YouTube, uh, they can actually see this Antonio Cassano jacket, which I was unaware of before, uh, before the um, Mourinho's quote. I can't quite tell. So it's a sort of corduroy-ish jacket with a fur lining that looks like he's just wrapped a fox around his neck. Game of Strange style. <laughs> he signed for Madrid. I assume in the summer, the guy must have been roasting alive. How on earth he put on so much weight if he had that jacket to, uh, to sweat out? Um, it is. I think. I think terrifying. there's actually a. Fu I think there's a funny point. Add additional point to this story about him gaining all the weight. Does he not blame it on like the uh. Nutella that got supplied by like club sponsors or something as well? Oh, I'm pretty sure what, he does. What a, what a guy. What a guy. And you know though that. If he was still playing in 2023, he wouldn't be lighting up the Europa League because he wouldn't be good enough. He'd be lighting up the Conference League. And I just want to throw everyone in the direction of the Conference League before we wrap up because there's some great games. I know, JJ, you mentioned Basel-Nice. Uh, Fiorentina as well. They've got to, got to have, feel like they've got a strong chance of getting some European silverware against Lech Poznan. And also keep an eye on West Ham against Ghent. I can't think of many things more West Ham-ish than them winning a European trophy and getting relegated. <laughs> Uh, and that could happen because going away to Ghent and then who, uh, they've got Arsenal then in the Premier League, they're losing to Arsenal certainly on mm. Sunday. <laughs>